Hey guys, it's Carl here. We got another Ask Carl session uh, this week. I've been had a busy week, uh, kind of debuting some, kind of putting the finishing touches on some things in my uh, Geo365 Academy that I'm gonna be launching at the end of the week. So hopefully you guys will be ready for that. Um, and in the, doing that, it took a lot of time for me. <laughs> so I couldn't really transcribe any of your music. So I said, I went on Instagram and on YouTube and said, hey guys, just uh, ask me some questions. I'll do another Ask Carl. So that, that won't take me much time. So that's what I'm doing today. So I appreciate you watching this. And please, I just want to do a quick little mention. I'm on Instagram. The, dis the link will be in the description below. Um, I'm right near 10,000 followers on Instagram. And when I get to that 10,000, it opens up a lot of different tools that I can use in Instagram that I can't use right now. So please, if you don't follow me already, I'm, I'll promise I'll make it interesting over there on Instagram. I got some cool stuff planned for there. Um, go over there and, and, and follow me on Instagram right now, please. So, um, I can get that threshold and, uh, start to entertain you guys. All right, so let's get to the questions. Um, I got 30 some questions here. My brother kind of, I've, I've been busy, so my brother kind of tallied these all up for me through the, both Instagram and YouTube and gave me this sheet of paper two minutes ago. So I haven't seen these questions, so it's gonna be interesting. All right, first one's from Dwayne. Um, what is your least favorite word? Oh, that one's easy for me. Influencer. I hate the word influencer. I, you know, I get a lot of, I'm lucky enough to get a lot of free gear sent to me, uh, guitars, pedals, whatever. And I, like half the time, more than half the time, it says it's addressed to Carl Brown influencer. And I can't stand the word. Uh, I, I hate, it, it makes me feel like I'm being like uh, thrown into the same batch of like the uh, teenage girls who are have like a hundred thousand Instagram followers just because they take pictures of their dessert or something. I just, I can't take it. I've been passionate about music and guitar my entire life and I just hate being compared with these people. But, um, anyway, I guess it's, it's, you know, I guess it's not that bad. Connor, if you could sit down and have coffee with any guitarist alive or dead, who would it be? Probably, uh, Steve Vai. I would I, I pick Steve I. Brew Hops, uh, you have become a synonymous meme icon in my friend group. What is your favorite meme of all time? I would say Doreem Cheems. I have no idea what you just said. <laughs> I don't know anything about this. Um, is that what, I don't, I don't know what the meme culture is. I don't even, I, I know a meme is like some funny things on a, a, I don't really know what it is. So I wish I could answer it. Um, Maybe this is an inside joke. Would you? Uh, am I being made fun of? I don't know. <laughs> T Stacks, how many songs do you typically remember at a time? Just the ones that I have to do for the uh, for the YouTube channel. So sp typically, the, well, during the quarantine, I've been shooting for four. So I'll usually we usually film on Mondays. So I usually spend Sunday getting them together, trying to uh, get the songs done Sunday afternoon. Um, and then I'll wake up Monday morning and kind of review them. And then my brother shows up and we film it. Um, Michael, who are your, some of your favorite guitarists and who's playing do you find most challenging to teach? Uh, like I've mentioned this before, I love Eric, Eric Johnson, you know, Ben Court, Steve I, um, um, you know, a lot of jazz guys like Joe Pass, Ted Green. Um, I, you know, uh, the most difficult ones to teach are the ones that don't like use specific patterns in their playing. You know, one of the hard, most difficult ones just to get his style exactly right would be somebody like Eddie Van Halen. Just he does have patterns when he taps, but when he plays just about anything else, it's just I, don't, I can't. I, I, I use the word slippery. It's just and it's very musical and very cool, but and very creative, but. There's, it's kind of hard to kind of lock it down into a specific pattern that you can memorize. So that's probably the, the weirdest ones to teach. What is your biggest challenge learning? Well, my biggest challenge in learning the guitar was staying focused in one specific area. And it's probably helped me as a career wise, as a teacher, because I know a pretty good amount about a lot of styles. I'm not just a, a, a metal guy, or a rock guy. I've spent a lot of time studying classical guitar and classical music composition or orchestration all together. And I've also spent a lot of time studying jazz and blues and rock and metal. Um, so there's a lot of styles in there that my I can't stay focused. It's probably harmed me in a uh, on a career as a um, perform like a, an artist because I when I start getting inspired to write music in one area, 
um, it doesn't happen because I, I literally I change gears every couple of months. So, um, but it, it helps me as a teacher, I guess. Brent, what are some of your favorite guitar solos to play? You know, probably my favorite thing, a uh, song to play that I probably still know could 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 pull off within a you know dust it off in like 10, 15 minutes. Probably Cliffs of Dover. I think that one's a. I actually wrote an entire guitar course about Eric Johnson's style that you can find in my Guitar Academy. Check the link below for the Academy. So I'm very in tune with his style, pretty much, and um, and that's such a musical song, that's amazing guitar licks in it, and uh, so I focus on his a lot. So it got I got that one down pretty well at, at one point, and if I dust it off, I think it, it's it's just a really fun track to play. What's your golf handicap and what's your favorite course you've played? But well, Golf Handy Cup is, is, is hovering around the high single digits right now, but I'm working it down. Um, we're in the middle of this quarantine. Actually, today is the first day I get to go back out and play golf, which I'm very excited about. So uh, my handicap might go up. <laughs> but uh, favorite course that I've played, we have a lot of great courses here in California. I live on the Central Coast. There's a course up uh, about an hour and a half north of my where I live uh, called La Parisima. It's very challenging course, um, but it's it's probably my it's in Lompoc, California. So I, I play that one every couple of months. Uh, Mitsu Bruce, uh, if you had to lose a left hand finger, which would it be? <laughs> okay, uh, you know most people probably wouldn't say this. I would actually lose my ring finger, which I know this is what most people use for ninety percent of their playing. I my. The reason why is if I just had three fingers to use, there's a lot more independence between the pinky and the middle finger than there is between the ring finger and the middle finger. So if you tried that, you tried to play something, if you've developed your pinky. The pinky is actually the strongest finger on the hand, and you can see players like Steve Ray Vaughan, when he's doing like really fast, like little descending pentatonic licks, he's using a lot just his first finger and his pinky to do that because it's a very quick finger and a very strong finger. If you just got good, you work on your hand positioning because it is shorter than the other ones. Um, but it has a lot of independence compared, you know, uh, t with uh, the middle finger. So I would choose that, and that would look crazy, I'm sure. But um, yeah, that would be the ones I'd use. One, two, and four. I would have rock and roll will never die. What's your biggest advice for learning theory? Biggest advice is don't just learn theory. Learn how your ear hears that theory. Now my musicianship course and my academy does that. It's a theory course, but it teaches you the theory along with teaching you how to hear that theory. Because knowing how to spell all your keys or all your modes um, or, or uh, write chord progressions on paper and, and know that they are in this specific key or how to modulate, do it on paper, which most music students, when they go to even to university level, they can do. They can't actually hear that in their head, though, that what they're writing. They're just, it's like an academic exercise. And it means nothing unless you actually know what that sounds like. So you can write one, two, five, one progressions all day, but if you don't know what a two, five, one progression sounds like when you hear it, you're you losing. And music is a hearing art, so uh, you're you're really leaving a lot on the table there because that's how you need to hear how music works, not only be able to you know see it and analyze it that way. I would say. Develop your ear. Don't study any theory cold on its own. Make sure you know how that theory sounds. And if you don't know what it sounds like, then you don't know it yet. So check out my musicianship course. That's what will teach you what to do. Straight Savage Sane. Straight Savage Sane. <laughs> Triple S. Okay. Uh, what is your favorite decadent music of guitar playing overall for teaching and learning and playing? 80s? Definitely. 80s, yes. Aaron, have you ever had any ambitions to become a permanent touring band guitarist? You know, I was a perm. I, I did have a group called a lot, the uh, Vegas Rock Experience, and we played Vegas, and then we played a lot of areas in the Nevada, different towns. Um, um, it, not the lifestyle that I really enjoy. Um, I much prefer being able to, you know, kind of build an audience online and, and do things in my own element and then be able to have my life outside of it instead of your entire life dominated by travel and people that you don't know and and you know there's some fun times to do with that but it's I enjoy kind of what I do now better. Astrojo, is there a best way to learn guitar? Everything seems scattered. 
Why, yes, there is. There is my Guitar Academy. <laughs> I keep mentioning this in this. Uh, yeah, GL365 Academy. GL365 Academy, massively expanding this 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 week actually, um, and it's got all my guitar courses, and they're all systematic, so nothing scattered. So if you want to learn how to do a rock improvisation, you start at level one and just start go through sequential through the chapters. If you want to develop alternate picking, I've got a course of over 30 videos. So alternate picking, it's sequentially teaching you how to play. Eventually, at the end of the course, you have eight etudes that cover every possible combination from the alternate picking. So it's a lot of cool stuff. So it's all systematic, so please go check that out. Way to go, Paul. In your opinion, what is the hardest uh, Metallica riff to play? I would still say, I know a lot of people, there's a lot of the, some stuff that's faster off of uh, Injustice for All. When when, he's, when James is using some it, um, like alternate picking, it makes it a lot easier, even though they're very quick riffs and hard to play. Probably the hardest one still to play for I think for most players the one I get the most questions about and for me as well is just the intro to Master of Puppets because it's just that continuous all downstroke if you do it like he does and the way that descends and the, the string tension changes as he descends down the low E string. It, it it makes it very awkward to play and, and get through the whole intro. As soon as you get to the part where da 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 that's a lot easier. But the the very beginning of that little descending line is I, I think most people struggle with that. Okay, Nick says, tell us about your performing experience. Assuming assuming you've had a fair share. And P.S. Thank you for teaching me guitar. Well, thank you for watching, Nick. Before music experience, I've been in uh, original bands, but as you know, unfortunately. Um, People don't support local music as much as they used to, um, so it's kind of hard to get an original band off the ground. And it was before, it, were kinda, it was like in the lean area where people weren't supporting live music as much, but um, the online explosion of music hadn't happened yet. So, uh, so when you're learning now, when you're when you're trying to develop now as a musician, you you have a gr you could build a great audience online on your own terms. That wasn't quite there yet. Um, I moved to LA with a band in 2000, and and we tried for a bit. Then I got really heavy into classical music and classical guitar, um, so I kind of disbanded that. But I've been in uh, various uh, uh, you know cover bands too, and those are probably my biggest shows that I've played. I, I played in the Vegas Rock Experience, was the lead guitarist for them for a couple of years, and. We played big shows out there on Fremont Street and played 600 hours on stage in one year. It was a pretty hectic year, but um, but so that's about that's about it. And I've, I kind of last uh, kind of retired the stage thing and really focused online around uh, 2013. I kind of just ended it and just decided to focus online. And I like the decision. It's 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 a lot. Easier life. Ewan, uh, do you watch many guitar related YouTubes like Rob Scallon, Stevie T, and if so, who is your favorite? I don't watch a ton of YouTube. I obviously know who those guys are and I've seen some videos and they're very creative people and funny and uh, I wish I could be that creative and funny and be that entertaining. I'd probably have a lot more subscribers. But I, I don't necessarily, I watch, if I watch any YouTube, it's kind of like golf instruction. <laughs> Um, I, but I don't find myself uh, you know, scan, scanning YouTube for guitar, uh, you know, s stuff that often. I, I get enough of that on my own. Brad, any hint of what is coming up for your academy? Well, I'll tell you guys. Um, the academy is launching into all the apps, so you're going to be able to access my academy not only on the web. Uh, this, this is coming on uh, Thursday. I don't know what day this video is going to be published, but on Thursday, you'll be able to access the academy not only um, on the web, like you can now, but also iOS mobile, Android, Roku, Google TV. I don't know if they call it Android TV or not. Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV. So all the major app carriers, you'll be able to download an app and log it. If, you, if, you're, a, if you're an Academy member, um, you will be, I'll put a link there in the description. If you're an Academy member where you sign up there, um, then you can just go to any of those app stores and download the app and log into your account and access the content on any device. If you have like a mobile device or a tablet, you can download the lessons into the tablet, save it into it, so watch it offline. So uh, put a lot of work into this for the past few months and we're finally going live um, this week, so it's very exciting. Hopefully you'll check it out. Plus, I'm gonna be doubling the amount of course content in the Academy this year, so it's gonna be a big year. John, what do you, uh, what do, you do when you feel like you've hit a plateau in your technique? I think it's, it's, sometimes it's healthier if you're working on technique, if you, have, you feel like you've hit a plateau in your technique. 
Um, I almost, Steve, I almost says this all. all I, I don't know how he puts it, but he says this, you are that. So you are, you will eventually become what you imagine yourself to be. So you are going to, if you imagine yourself to be this incredible virtuoso that just effortlessly plays and, and you're visualizing yourself as this and you're, you're, you're working out guitar stuff in your mind. When you're just walking around all day, you focus on it. It's amazing how, how the brain actually begins to make that a reality. So I almost feel like a lot of the technical breakthroughs that I've had have come from just when I'm walking around in the day, I could be on the golf course or whatever, and I'm just thinking about guitar stuff and all the time, and I can just feel it in my, I can imagine the sensation of this technique and, and um, technical issue I might be having, and it feels like I solve a lot of problems that way. So when I come back to the guitar, Oh, uh, okay. It, it, it's 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 there. So it becomes focusing on it and seeing yourself. Um, it's kind of a I've, I've called this. You can call it like mental imaging. But this is it's a very important idea for an advanced musician to be working out things in your mind all day, every day. And as you do this, you're going to be imagining your yourself playing in certain ways and being able to play certain things. And it's almost like it tricks your brain to actually being able to do this stuff. So I think that's where it comes from. Um, and it's probably one of the most valuable things that you can do is just mentally imagining yourself being what you want to be. And really don't just like fantasize like, oh, the cotton candy's falling from the sky and you can play. No, I'm talking like actually seeing yourself real life technical things and, 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 and overcoming them with this like great fluidity and imagine what your hands and technique, try to feel it in your mind. And it really does work, you know, you, you become a lot more in tune with the instrument. All right, Zach asks, what do I think of Steel Panther? I mean, I think they're very, I haven't really followed them lately, um, but I've actually seen them play probably, I would say, about 50 times. But it was back when they were, they got big right when I was, they started right when I kind of moved out to L.A., so in the late 90s, I was visiting here, and we went, me and my buddies, we went to the Viper Room, and they were playing there, but they were all huddled in the bathroom, and so we were, and they were almost on, you know, doing their whole shtick, in the. it was, they're hilarious. And I was like, who are these guys? What are this thing? And they were actually getting ready for the show in this tiny little bathroom off the, the it's the only place they could get ready, and so they were very small back then. And they went out there, and I've, I've, I don't think I've ever laughed so hard in my life. And so we just started going to see them, and, I, and that was right before I moved to L.A. Then I moved to L.A., and we watched them grow, and they could just go from, you know, the Roxy to then play in the Key Club. And then the, the clubs just got, kept getting bigger and bigger, and I think they had management changes. I don't know. They, they, anyway, some of the funnest nights of my life were at their shows. I mean, um, so they're, they're, they're extremely fun. I've, I've, I literally, I've probably seen them play 50 times, but I have probably haven't seen them play in 15 years though. Cause I, it's, it's been a while since I've been down in LA going to all the clubs and bars and stuff. So very interesting. I don't really know their music that well though. Uh, I just think they're a really great live act. William says, if you could tour with any band this year as a guitarist, which band would you choose? Well, this year, I don't think anybody's touring, so it'd be kind of a bummer to get the gig and not go anywhere, but probably Metallica. I'd like to replace Kirk Hammett, so let me know if he needs it. No, I just give him Metallica just because, man, the shows are so huge and they have so much energy. Um, so I think that would be like, the funnest band to be a part of. Josh, do you think we will ever see rock music big and popular like it was in the 70s, 80s? I think it'll be big and popular. It's just, it's going to be different because um, I think there's a great thing. It's like, you know, you see the rock stars back then when you're packing stadiums. It might be different now because back then there was a select few bands that got record deals and then could explode and get huge and have these massive followings. But now we have, you don't need, really even need a, a record contract. If you're good and you're good not only as a musician and creative, but you also are good at online, do, working online stuff, marketing, social media, you can find a, quite a large audience just on your own. And it's far more profitable too, because if you had a dedicated following of 100,000 people that bought your albums and watched your music and wanted to watch you play, um, you're going to make a lot more money than selling 10 million albums on a major label. So because most of that goes to the label and goes to all those promoters and stuff. But if you could actually focus on uh, really being able to connect with, on a much more intimate level with a small amount of people, but take a lot of most of the profit yourself, 
you're going to have a lot better financial success and be able to do whatever music you want. So it's kind of an exciting time for that. If you really kind of harness those two things, good at your craft, but also know your way around social media and stuff like that, you can do great things anytime. Jameson, uh, when does metal become just noise? He also says he's excited for the new Academy at Jameson. I guess that's my buddy Jameson who helps me out a lot here on YouTube as a moderator and and so it's a, and he, he's the one that does all the uh, time stamping of my newer lessons. At least the songs he likes, I see. But <laughs> uh, but he helps out a lot because that probably that's time consuming. That's why I don't do it myself. When does metal come just noise? I guess it depends on the. You know, I like metal. If I if I listen to metal, it needs to be recorded well. And so I don't listen to a lot of the, the sludgy type, you know. I like it to, you know, really hit and, and have a, a powerful interface, like precise sound. And there's some bands that are just produced a little bit um, for effect, for like a, like a, a sloppier, looser sound, and I'm not a huge fan of that. So I like the, the, the tighter sounding metal um, myself and if it gets too sloppy and too fast yeah that's just noise to me lewis if you could meet any guitarist that has passed away which one would you choose much love i hope you're doing great that's a really tough one man because there's 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 guys that are the fam most famous guitarist ever like hendrix and you're obviously he's, he's creative and he did some really cool stuff um, musically but saying that i wanted to meet somebody like that is more kind of a kind of a uh, I'm more of a fame horror, you know, I, I, I want just because he's so famous, but so I, I couldn't really pick some, I'd have to pick somebody who had a more musically, uh, might, might be not as well known, but musically had an impact on me more. You know, I'd probably say, and I've thought about doing a video on him soon, I've actually met him, I took guitar lessons from him, I would say Ted Green, um, to me he was the most um, knowledgeable guitar player I've ever seen or heard of in my life and when I moved to LA in 2000 and I, I moved to Sherman Oaks and he lived just a couple blocks away uh, and uh, was teaching lessons for it was like 25 30 bucks and I was really cheap so uh, so he was um, I, yeah I'll do a video about him I want you guys to know about him he was he's the genius of a geniuses I mean just uh, unbelievable so uh, so I, I'd probably want to he died uh, try very suddenly um, from a heart attack and so I it was uh, right right after I started taking lessons from him so he hopefully he will uh, uh, people will more there's a, still a website dedicated to all of his teaching right now so you guys could check that out and I'll, I'll be doing a video about him soon Josh says hey Carl's wondering what multi effects pedal board you recommend Lion 6 Helix that's what I use I love the Lion 6 stuff sounds great Easy interface to use. Um, I mean, you can be up and running with it within a couple hours. And uh, like I have one at my feet right now. And so I could not do these lessons without that gear. And I've always used pretty much 99% of the time I'm using line, line six modeling stuff on my lessons throughout the over the past decade. Alec, what your favorite frontman of all time? Mine's Jim Morrison. Mental note, I bought this house from Robbie Krieger's cousin. The uh, favorite frontman of all time, it had to be genre because I, I love... I like I, I love like Frank Sinatra, I love that kind of era. I love his voice. But then when we get to rock music, I would say Freddie Mercury, and uh, if we say metal, just overall frontman, frontman presence and voice, Sebastian Bach to me is like the most ultimate um, metal frontman. Obviously, people like Hetfield are great frontman and just all around musicians and writers and stuff. So he's amazing too. But the classic frontman guy running around, you know, impressing the ladies and, and you know, an amazing voice and, and presence, I would pick Sebastian Bach. Ryland, for someone who is willing to go through the process and steps to be one of the greatest rock stars of this upcoming generation, what is the most important thing I need to understand? I love your videos and your personality. You've helped me out so much. Well, Ryland, I mean, it's good. I love that there's people out there motivated to take guitar to a new level and to a new audience and to keep it going. So all you guys who watch my videos, keep it going. Your favorite guitar players 
or just people you see cool on videos you see online from some guy doing a cover or, or one of my lesson videos or anybody you see doing cool guitar stuff, share it. Share it online because that's how you make the guitar community grow and then guitarists support other guitar players. So it'll help you for your own personal career too to keep the art of guitar alive. This kind of goes back to my other question. Uh, the ability to, um, the, the process obviously is you need to, find what you love and pursue it um, with you know pretty much regard for no regard for anything else so you you find what you have you go ahead for it don't try to follow a specific trend because but you if you're if you're 14 years old and you like a specific band that's trending right now um, by the time you get to the age where you're gonna go and sign record deals or, or go out and start touring the trends will have changed so just it's a better method it's just find the trend that's in you and then bring the music out of you that you want to do and pursue that and that's what's going to make you the most successful in the long run anyway and it's going to be the most enjoyable for you and like i mentioned before harness online media know how to advertise your band uh, and do it relentlessly and you will be found you will be discovered by an audience and you will be able to have a nice career at it esh i probably messed that up what is the best way best exercises to learn how to play fast for a beginner, uh, semi-intermediate. So technique is important. Technique in the beginning is the biggest hurdle. For um, obviously, if you can't play something physically, play something on guitar, you're not going to be, you know, that's going to be a huge challenge. So in the beginning, it's not like theory, theory. I can teach you th in two weeks. I can teach you enough theory that more theory than probably most of your favorite guitar players know. All right. The technique takes a lot longer to develop. So I always say, especially in the beginning, spend a little bit more time with direct technique study. Like in my, in my academy, I have t uh, technique courses on like, you know, alternate picking, economy picking. We have sweet picking. We have all these different types of um, areas that you can work on. And they're detailed focused exercises. So you're not worried about playing music. You're, you're developing coordination with a set of graded exercises and uh, that then you can go and take um, if you can play these exercises then picking up music naturally is a lot easier and just you don't have to practice music like I don't 99% of the music that I play on YouTube I don't have to practice I just know how to I, my I know how to have the coordination to play it period so you want to get to that level and the only way you really get to that level is not by playing music all the way through it's by working on specific technique exercises so I would say that Focus on technique. Have great exercises that you play that are that get a lot of bang for the buck, um, and then you'll be able to when you go to play music, it's going to see, all seem a lot easier to you. Chloe, what songs have been the most challenging to learn yourself? You always teach them effortlessly, and it makes me curious of your struggles. Yeah, it's not I, the, the biggest thing with me is I don't have a lot of time to learn. I literally, I, I usually learn about four songs in a day and then I teach them the next morning. So that's kind of my routine. Sometimes I give myself like a day and a half or a full weekend to, to do the song. So I'm under a crunch and I do a lot of some advanced material and stuff. Um, the hardest thing to transcribe for me are the players that don't stick, um, that kind of just have a loose, that improvise licks that are kind of similar but they repeat and they're always a little bit different every time. And it's kind of this off the cuff playing that they would never recreate themselves. Um, Somebody like J Jimmy Page does this a lot, and uh, but when you're teaching, when I'm teaching note for note online, I, I, I try to do in-depth lessons and note for note accurate, and people expect it to be note for note, which just the way the solo was written, it really wasn't written to be played like that. And um, sitting down and analyzing it, you kind of lose what that sections are of the solo are about. Um, and it's very tedious too, so I don't feel like a lot of people get through it. So um, those are the, you know, from it's, it's weird. I, you know, I'd rather teach. It's it's easier for me to teach something that's highly technical, but I can like a Randy Rhodes solo. But there's like specific patterns and forms that he's he's going across instead of something that's just loose and bluesy and just kind of just erratic and and all over the place. So those are the hardest ones to memorize. But um, when it comes to challenging music, it's, it's the music that I'm not familiar with. If it's not something I didn't grow up hearing um, and so I kind of have it in the back of my mind, it's harder for me to memorize. So um, I have to listen to it a lot while I'm transcribing it in order to memorize it because I'm knowing that the next morning I have to film this. So there's a lot of pressure, but uh, I... I I could fake it 
with the best of them. <laughs> a repa of strings. All right, that's hard to worry because it's all, all lowercase. Uh, what guitarist, band, artist influenced you the way you play now? Thank you for all the lessons. You know, it's weird. I've been uh, spending a lot of time lately on jazz music. So I don't know specific artists that I, that has done. I mean, my overall guitar style, I'd probably say my influences are, main influences that show up in my playing at least would be kind of Eric Johnson. I also love like Nuno Bittencourt. So uh, stuff like that probably shows up more in my own styles, but I'm trying to um, go back to that. I did a lot of jazz studies as a teenager. I've been going back to a lot of those and, and working on some stuff. But I don't have a specific player that I really kind of follow it with jazz. It's just kind of everything. So, um, but for the rock, the guy, things you guys see me play mostly, I would say probably Eric Johnson type of stuff. Quentin, what's the best electric and acoustic guitar you have ever played? Um, well, I love my Strat. I don't know if it's the the best guitar. It's just got, you know, I, I'm kind of a loyal person. <laughs> I have like, I'm loyal to like people. I have a few people in my life that I'm like really, you know, friends with and I don't have a ton of huge, you know, posse around me. I just, but I'm also the same way with guitars. I have a lot of guitars here because they're, they're, I mean, this, behind this wall, there's a bunch of guitars that have been sent to me from companies, but I, I don't really play them. I like my Strat. I've had a long history with it. The Eric Johnson Strat. It's a 2006 Eric Johnson, and I've customized it kind of a way around the way that I play. So I would say if I if I had to, you said you could only have one electric your entire life, I'd choose that one. For acoustic, um, I would say my con my Fritz Mueller uh, Cedar Double Top classical guitar, which unfortunately because of my nerve issue in my hand, haven't been able to spend a lot of time with the past few years because of my fingerstyle te technique is junk right now. But I'm getting that back and. Um, so that's probably my favorite acoustic guitar I've played though. Cam, if you were offered one million dollars but you could only keep it if you recited the lyrics to a song perfectly, which song would you pick? I have no, nothing. I don't, I'm such a, I'm not a word person. I do not know the lyrics to a single song in the entire world. I, you know, I can kind of fake it through it and I'm kind of humming around and singing around the house all day and stuff like that, but I kind of repeat the same verse. <laughs> Because I, I just, I can't memorize lyrics. I, 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 when I was in the cover bands, I had to do backup vocals. And we would play these songs for years. And I could play, memorize hundreds of songs in, in, in what we would play. We had a repertoire of hundreds of songs that we could play at any time. Because we would play like six hours a night. And um, I just, I had a couple of spots in our background vocals. I had to sing actual lyrics in like longer lyric lines on, you know, kind of, with the singer and for a year i've been doing it for years i'd have to tape them at the front of the stage just the lyrics the music i can do i just i just lyric, words don't stick with me i don't know why nolan uh what do you who do you think is the most underrated rock metal guitarist of all time i want to say he's underrated but he definitely doesn't get all the attention like the mag the used to when i was growing up but um nuno bittencourt i think uh nuno bittencourt's just overall, I know he's all, he's 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 a well-known shredder. I know he's not like he's underrated guitar player, but you know, when you hear people mention their favorites here and there, I don't see his name mentioned enough for how just dramatic, just incredible of a guitar player he is. I mean, overall, I mean, he's all around musician. I've seen him play, and he goes out and he does just all sorts of stuff. His style is probably, I think, the coolest guitar style anybody's ever created for themselves. So um, I would say Nuno Bittencourt. William, how do you go about learning the songs for your tutorials? Um, usually, I'm just standing in a room with a guitar on me, uh, and I have Spotify at my fingertips, and I look through a lot of, uh, you know, requests and suggestions and figure out the ones I'm going to do and I start listening to them on Spotify and um, I have like a there's like a like it's an app I look a little uh, chrome I, you know sometimes I'll use Spotify or I'll just find the original video like artist the official video on uh, YouTube so I can slow it down uh, I used to use other software but now the YouTube the that device that slows it down is fine for me and you can take it down to like 70 or 50% if, if, there's a, if there's a section of the song that I need to slow down a little bit to listen to. So I'll kind of go through it that way. I like to stand there um, and, and figure it out by ear first. Um, get the notes down um, because it helps me memorize it faster. If I do it myself and just get the transcribe it by ear. Then I'll go and try to find a live performance video of the artist playing it. Sometimes it's not always available, but usually it is. 
Um, and I double checked the, the exact fingerings that they would be using, because as we know on guitar, there's usually multiple ways of playing the exact same notes. So I will make sure that I'm playing it exactly like they are. That's about it. I, I gotta do a little detective work, you know, put the two together and um, kind of come up with a good method of, uh, of teaching it. And that's about it. Chris, I am 49 this year and all I want to do is play my favorite songs. I don't want to write my own music, improvise or even perform. All I want to do is throw on a tune and play along with it. What do I need to learn to be able to pick up songs quickly and what don't I need to learn? Basically, what am I asking? What I'm asking for is, do I need to learn keys, all the notes on the fretboard, major scales, or is this just a waste of time for my end goal? What should I concentrate on? So, Chris, if you just want to play music, then it's pretty much just a technique thing. You need to work on your technique. So, I would say technique exercises, uh, like I talked about a little bit earlier. Um, will help you get to the point where you can play anything. Now, I will say that if you're interested in memorizing a lot of music and that you want to play, then you're probably going to want to know a little bit of theory. Uh, knowing theory and knowing how music works helps me memorize music faster. If everything was just like a, a, like a number on a string, if you're reading tablature or stuff to figure out your songs, if, if you're just memorizing numbers and, uh, or dots on a page or whatever, it doesn't really stick to uh, that well um, for most people unless you do it like hundreds of times in a row. But if I can say, okay, that's a, that's a two, five, one progression in A, and then it goes to this key or whatever, and he's playing this A minor blues position and the fifth position here out of the solo here, uh, this part of the solo, it helps me memorize the song better. So, um, so it, it is helpful, but literally if you're like, I just want to learn music, you know, your biggest thing that you should just work on is your technique then. And if you cover it correctly, I actually have a section in my academy that covers this called Mastering Difficult Licks, which focuses on using music itself, songs that you love, to develop your technique and how to isolate sections of the song, turn them into technique exercises. So you're developing technique and focusing on technique but you're also learning the songs that you love at the same time. So um, that is also a great way of uh, developing uh, the ability to play anything you want. Carpenter, this is easy. What is your favorite color? I would say blue. Ash, hey, Ash. Ash by the way, Ashton, she's got a great uh, YouTube channel herself, and she's uh, more popular than me on Instagram because she plays great guitar, uh, does a lot of cool solos, does a lot of great 80s covers. I'll put, some, I'll put a link to, to her channel um, below so you can, guys can follow her too. She's really, really cool. But she asked, uh, she's, one of the, she's one of the guitar channels I watch on YouTube. How about that? Uh, what's the most enjoyable aspect of or best perk of your job? Enjoyable aspect is being able to make my own schedule. It's, it's not like any job, you're, you're, under, you're under pressure. I've got things I've got to do. I've got goals I want to do for my academy, have a certain amount of guitar courses done. I answer a, a lot of emails every day. Um, for people who are Academy members of mine, I want to make sure that they're being supported. You're a member of the Academy, Ashley, you know this. But it does allow me to kind of do my own thing. I can do, uh, you know, I can plan it around my day. I can go, you know, play golf, hang out with my dogs. And I get to hang out at home, you know, so it, uh, it, which is my favorite place to be. So I, um, it's, I think that's it. That's probably the freedom that it gives me. I don't have to go to a somebody else's business and punch a clock and work nine to five. I can kind of plan this stuff around my own things that I want to do in my life. Uh, Giorgio, how can I get better at alternate picking? Thanks so much for the videos. Hey, I have an alternate picking course. <laughs> this wasn't supposed to be Academy trailer, but it's turning out to be. I have a, I actually just now updated my alternate picking course. It's actually the oldest technique course on my site. And I still have the same materials, same exercises and eight etudes that you'll learn throughout the course. But I updated the entire thing, shot it in new 4K and added a couple of chapters where I can really explain certain things uh, about technique and ideas of practicing. And I think it's like it's like the, the, uh, many more videos now. So it's like five hours long, this course. Uh, so, you know, 20 some videos, I think. Um, so please go check out that. It's the alternate picking course. You'll see that the uh, GL365 Academy with a link in the description. Steven, uh, has your life changed that much due to the quarantine since you usually do not leave the house anyway and your job is inside? You know, my job has become a little bit more intense because I've been putting out a little bit more content during the quarantine. But, um, you know, the fact that I couldn't play golf, like today, I'm going to go play golf today, but 
Um, that's something that I usually do and practice throughout the week. Um, so I haven't done that. I have for, played in six weeks. So, um, But, yeah, for, besides that, no, not really. I've, I've actually – I actually enjoy being at home and being able to work, work on music – um, my own musical studies and, and, and stuff like that. And my dogs are here. So I pretty much have everything I need here. So, um, it's not that been that bad for me. I just wish I could play golf, but you know, it's, it's, it was better to kind of be safe around everything. And, you know, I don't want to get sick. I don't want to get anybody else sick. So it's, 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 uh, but it's, uh, yeah, it's not that far off from what I do every day anyway. All right, guys, so that's it for this Ask Carl. Thank you for watching, uh, you know, me ramble for uh, however long this has been. I, am, I'm, I can be quite the talker when I get in front of when I get these things and uh, all these questions in front of me. Please, we'll do this again soon, and uh, please keep sharing my videos. Like I said, follow me on Instagram, um, and, um, you know, anything you can do, to, if you want to go check out my Guitar Academy, I'd really appreciate it, and if... If you have any questions, please email me there at my website, and I'll be sure to um, respond as fast as I can. All right, see you soon.